Dustin Long, MRN.com. Tony, since the accident, when you think of Kevin Ward Jr., what comes to mind? Honestly, before the accident, I didn't know Kevin. I mean, I and I don't even know how many times I'd raced with him. I, I raced with that group a couple times a year. Um, they've always been a great group to race with. Um, but I, I didn't know him. Uh, but obviously, after the accident, I've, I've read a lot about him. And, and uh, you know, from what I've read, I, I think he had a, a really promising career as a sprint car driver. It sounded like he uh, was doing a, a good job and learning a lot at a young age. So uh, I, I think he had a lot to, to look forward to. Uh, Bob Hocker, Sporting News. Do you want to and need to talk to the Ward family to have any sort of closure? And if so, can you talk to them or are you prepared to that it could be years until all the kind of legal stuff is done for that before you can talk to them? You know, I think at this point, it's, I want to be available to them if they want to talk about it. I, at this point, I don't need, I don't need to talk to them for closure. Um, I know what happened and I know it was an accident, but, you know, I'm offering to talk to them uh, to, to help them if it helps them with closure. So, uh, you know, I said it when we were in Atlanta, and I, I still believe that, you know, I want to be available to them if and when they ever want to talk. Uh, Alan Kavan on NASCAR.com. Uh, on the topic of closure, at some point the focus will turn back to your career as, as a race car driver. Have you thought about uh, when or how that can happen? Well, I mean, we've been racing since Atlanta, obviously, but it's, you know, it's not been business as usual by any means. Um, you know, and, and this is going to be a healing process for me. So, um, you know, it, it, it makes you think about a lot of things other than driving race cars. But the one, the one thing that's probably helped me more than anything is being back at the racetrack and being around my racing family and, uh, you know, remembering that I have a passion for what I do. So... Uh, you know, that, that's probably helped me more than anything when it's come to, uh, you know, trying to make that next step to move forward. Jeff Gluck from USA Today. Tony, if you could do di anything differently over the past couple months, what would it be? I'd have stayed at Watkins Glen that night. Um, you know, I, I do this stuff, and I go run those cars to have a good time, and, you know, that's all I wanted to do that night. I wanted to go have fun. I just spent the week at Knoxville, and it gives you the itch. It gives you the the desire to want to go race and um, you know it, it wasn't it wasn't a big paying race uh, you know for sprint car standards I just wanted to go run my run my sprint car for a night so uh, you know it's uh, I do it to have fun and it didn't end up being fun that night Tony Tom Jensen foxsports.com how have you been spending the the time since the accident happened and will your routine change now that You've been exonerated. Um, you know, since uh, since we went back to Atlanta, basically I go from the motorhome to the car, and from the car to the trailer, and from the trailer back to the car, and that's literally all I've done since I came back. So, um, you know, even after Wednesday, I, here in Charlotte, I haven't left my house. So, I, you know, it's just awkward feeling, but. Um, you know, I think now I'll start doing some more things. I mean, I've got a, a lot of friends that have been supportive through this entire thing. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that have shown how much they cared. And it'd be nice to go and visit and talk with those people again. Louis Frank of Reuters to your left there. Thanks, Tony. Um, have you reconsidered or considered a stop driving, stopping driving sprint cars uh, as a result of the this this year and your injury the year before at this point I don't really have I'm not gonna say I'm never gonna get in one but you know when I got hurt it was as soon as I got healed and as soon as things got settled in with the cup car I was I was set that I was wanting to get in one but right now I I wouldn't even be able to give you a, a small idea of if and when I'll ever get back in a car so uh, at this point I mean I won't I won't be in one for a while Viv yeah. Bernstein, NASC, uh, New York Times. Uh, the life of a driver and an owner is extremely busy. Press conferences, commercials, appearances, fan things. You haven't done, I, have you done much of that? And when will 
you think you get back to that life? I haven't done any uh, since the accident. And, uh, you know, I think after talking with you guys today, we'll, we'll start getting back into doing meet and greets and appearances again. Um, you know, I think it's important for me to do that and, and, you know, to take, I think that's another step of making forward progress is getting back to trying to resume what was at best a normal life before this. So, um, you know, I, I think it's important for me to do that and to get back to doing it as soon as possible. Marty, Marty Smith, ESPN. Tony, what has been the biggest change within you and the biggest impact upon you as a result of this past month and a half? Uh, you know, I honestly think that, you know, when you're, and I'm not going to speak for professional athletes in different forms of sports, but, you know, as a race car driver, that's driving a race car. That's all that consumed my life. It's, it's all I thought about. It's all I cared about. And everything else was second on down the list of priorities for me and um, I think this has given me the opportunity to sit there and think about other aspects of my life and what they really uh, are going to mean to me in the future and, and uh, you know not that I don't love what I do because I do love it but it's it's not you know just like you guys I mean, it's it's not what all we do all the time there's more things to to our life than what we have as a profession so uh you know, it's made me think about some of those other aspects of my life that, that kind of have been put on hold for years. I'm going to go back to the TV row, Marty, and then to the middle. Marty Snyder, NBC Sports. How would you characterize the weeks at home, Tony, following the accident? You basically were in seclusion. What was that like for you to have to go through that, and what, what did you do? I didn't really do much of anything, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, the, I think the first three days that I was home, I really didn't do anything. I didn't get out of bed. I didn't care if I took a shower. I, I left my room to go get food and that you almost had to make yourself eat. So, uh, it's, you know, the first three or four days, I didn't want to talk to anybody. Didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to, I, I just wanted to be by myself. And, um, but you finally get up, you finally start moving around, um, a little bit and, you know, every day got, a little bit easier, but it it was a big, big drastic change from what I was used to for sure. But it, it's you didn't have any desire to do anything. You just all all you thought about was what had happened, and and asking yourself why why did this happen? And so uh, you just sat there for an entire you know, days on end, sitting there asking questions and trying to to come to terms with what happened and why it happened. Kyle McCurry, my Fox Carolinas. I was uh, at Loudon a couple of weeks ago, and Jimmy Johnson talked about how people are starting to take sides. And I'm wondering, during this process, with things coming out on Twitter or people making comments in the media, did you keep yourself insulated from that, or did you follow any of it? And how did that impact the time that you weren't at the track? I, you know, I tried to do my best to insulate myself from that, but you know, I finally started reading what was out there and what people were saying, and you can't control that. It, you know, last Wednesday the facts came out and people still through the weekend, the same people that had the same opinion before the facts came out still have the same opinion and no matter what what side they think about, but it's, it, to me it's worthless to pick sides. It's not about picking sides. A, a young man lost his life and I don't care what side you're on, That it doesn't change that. There's his family's in mourning, I'm in mourning, my family's in mourning. It's, it's picking sides isn't, isn't solving or fixing anything. It's, it's a waste of time to pick sides. It, it, instead of honoring a, a young man that had a promising racing career, people are picking sides and throwing, it, it, it's like watching people throw darts at each other. It, it's, it, it's disappointing at this point, honestly, because instead of supporting each other and, and the racing com community is such a strong family that it's dividing people that on a daily basis would help each other and it's there's no point in it it's not it doesn't solve anything it doesn't fix anything and at the end of the day it's not going to make anybody feeling better about it it's it's just people that everybody's entitled to their opinion and we know that but everybody and I've I've seen this for the last 7 weeks now everybody is made 
their decision and pick their side off of 100% of the information that they got, which is about 10% of all the information that's truly out there. And we, we all do it. Our society does it. We do it every day. Whatever we see on the news, we, we make our decision as, as people about what we see. Um, but it's not, I don't think any of us every day about whatever topic it is we're trying to come to a conclusion about ever get all the facts and, and you know, so it, it's, it, you understand why people think the way they do, but I, I think more than not, I don't think people realize that, you know, that there's more information out there than, than what we all get on a daily basis about whatever it is. I guess it was more disappointing to me than anything. Um, you know, and and even from people that were supportive of us. I mean, listening to and what, reading comments about you know the sheriff's department and the district attorney. Uh, you know, they they did a a good job of taking the time that they needed to do to get all the facts and to to come to a very um, thought out conclusion to this and. Uh, you want to sit there and tell people, "Hey, let them do, let them do their job." And uh, but it's, it just shows how passionate people are. I mean, if if they were on our side or on Kevin's family side, I mean, they they were passionate about that, and that's something I don't want to see go away. I don't want to see people lose their passion. But I think people need to understand that there were a lot more facts that uh, that they didn't understand and and haven't seen. Doug Rice, Performance Racing Network. Hey, Tony. Uh, obviously, the season is moving on. Yesterday, Kevin Harvick, great run. Kirk Busch, not as great. How much have you let yourself be engaged in that side of the process right now as far as being the steward of Stuart Haas Racing? I've let my team down from that standpoint. I haven't been able to, to uh, you know, I've been a little bit of a cheerleader, but that's about all I've been able to contribute here the last seven weeks. It's just, um, you know, like we mentioned earlier, it's been hard for me to just function day to day. And, you know, I, there hasn't been anything normal about my life the last seven weeks. So it's it's been very hard to, to try to to do anything to be productive to help those guys. It's, it's you know, you try to be a cheerleader. You try to keep them pumped up about what they're doing. But other than that, I haven't been able to contribute too much. Eric Phillips from WSOC TV. Just wondering, you talk about being in seclusion and all that that has meant. Um, what does today represent for you? Having us all here, you called us all here together. What does today represent for you in terms of going forward? Well, you know, it, we knew everybody had questions and we knew that everybody was going to want answers to, to what's going on. But, uh, you know, I think more than anything, it was we wanted to be able to tell everything from the beginning, but it's, um, you know, it, like I learned Wednesday, it, everybody's got their opinions about what happens, and, and obviously the facts didn't matter to a lot of those people. They still have their opinions one way or the other, and, but, um, you know, we haven't, we haven't let anybody know what's been going on the last six weeks. I mean, we just kind of went through the motions as far as we're concerned, and, and, you know, we knew a lot of you would have questions about what's been going on the last six, seven weeks and, and how have we handled it. Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. Tony, what was it like to learn from the district attorney that in the toxicology report, Kevin Ward was under the influence? Honestly, for me, it didn't change anything. Um, to me, a, a young driver lost his life out of it. it didn't matter why or what was going on. It, the end result was the same. Uh, and it's, you know, no matter what was said, it was still a tragic accident. So, um, you know, I just, I know in my heart that it was 100% an accident and that detail didn't, didn't mean anything to me personally. Tony, Scott Fowler from the Charlotte Observer. You mentioned earlier the awkward feeling that uh, has, has come over you the past seven weeks. Can you explain that a little more and also talk about will that ever go away given that Kevin Ward has passed away and that will not change? I, it's just been awkward because you, you know, I know what a typical day was like for me and, and the things that were on my agendas for each day and what I thought about and 
And you kind of get in that pattern. And this was something that obviously changed that pattern drastically. So uh, everything you thought about, everything you worked on, you stopped thinking about, you stopped working on, and, and this is all you thought about. And uh, ask me the second part again. I think it will, and the reason I say that is, you know, I've had other people that I've known for years that have come to me and told me personal stories of tragedies that have happened in their life that a lot of us don't know about, and, and their experiences and, and their advice it really is, has hit home for me, and, and I do believe as time goes on, it'll, it will be different every day. It, 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 it may, I don't know if it'll ever get back to normal, but it, it will get better. Louis Franco Reuters. Tony, since getting back in a car, rate your, rate your performance as a driver. Well, I could rate it before and after almost the same. I mean, uh, my year hasn't been a stellar year by any means. Um, you know, when we, when we came back, um, you know, we had a decent day, started at Atlanta and had an incident that, that derailed it. But I think yesterday was probably the best overall race from start to finish that we've ran. Um, probably one of the best ones this year that we've actually ran. I mean, we, I, I struggled on restarts. I didn't, I couldn't get going very good the first three or four laps, but it seemed like after 10 laps or 15 laps, we were settling into a pace that was a top five race car. So, uh, you know, we, we didn't have any major dramas on either side during the whole race. We, we actually put a whole race together and, and you know, I know uh, a 14th or 15th place finish isn't anything to brag about, but considering, um, you know, the way our season's been, I mean, we, we finally put together a whole day that was consistent and that, that meant a lot to us. Okay, we'll go Steve, Kyle, and then we'll come back to Tom. Steve Post, Motor Racing Network. Tony, uh, it's kind of a follow-up on Doug. Doug asked about you with your NASCAR involvement with Stuart Haas Racing, your short track industry, your empire with Eldora, with your USAC teams that are having great things, and with the World of Outlaw teams with Donnie Schatz. What has that been like for you over the last seven weeks? I've watched and paid attention uh, to what was going on, uh, but I haven't been engaged in it. Um, you know, I've, I've watched our races that we had online at Eldora. I've watched the sprint car races online and listen to them online, but um, haven't been engaged with the teams, haven't been engaged with the drivers, just, uh, you know, we've just kind of been in our own deal. Hi, Tony, Tom Jensen, Fox Sports, over here. I don't know quite how to phrase this, but, but racing inherently is a dangerous sport. You've seen guys get killed in accidents over the years. If this would have been a situation where you know, you guys were racing and he crashed and he perished in the crash. Would it be, would it be something you would feel different about or did the nature of, you know, him coming out on the track, did that change at all for you? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, for me, I don't, I don't think it would change anything. I mean, I, I work, I've worked really hard and especially when I got hurt last year, I, I, while I was healing, I've spent all that time trying to defend sprint car racing and and help you know and try to help other drivers through the off season and um, I do it because I'm passionate about it and because I love it. But and we all know we all know what can happen every time we get in a race car, whether it's uh, an Indy car, a stock car, a sprint car. Anybody that that races anything knows what that is and what that danger is and what can happen. I've had. Friend, close friends die in race cars. I've had teammates die in race cars. Um, and there's nothing easy about it. I mean, like I said, the racing community is a very close-knit family. And that's, anytime you lose somebody in that family, there's drivers and team owners and crew members from other sports that may not have ever met that driver that feel for that family and that driver uh, through their tragedy. So whether no matter what the circumstances the the end result is something that nobody ever wants to see and, and you know like I said I've I've spent a lot of time trying to defend it and and trying to help promote the sport and uh, you know n none of us want that to happen to anybody under any circumstances 
Uh, Tony, Eric Spamberg with the Charlotte Business Journal. I'm curious, um, this is a secondary thing, but it will begin to be important if it hasn't already, which is how are you dealing with sponsors? How are you talking to sponsors about moving forward and what kind of concerns do you have about them being loyal to the team after this? It's a legitimate question for sure. I mean, we've, our, our organization has stayed in close contact with the sponsors through this whole ordeal. Um, and I've been able to, to talk to a couple of them as well. Uh, Johnny Morris was one of the people that came to my house to see me while I was in Indiana. Um, we've spoke to people from Mobile One and they've came to see us in the last couple of weeks at the racetrack. Uh, the support from them has been amazing. Um, it, it, it's obviously a tough circumstance for anybody to be a part of it, for a corporation to be a part of as well. But they've, uh, they've been very supportive through this whole whole process and uh, you know I can't speak to what the future will be for them but they they've been supportive to this point and that's something I've been very grateful for Mike, Mike Neff from frontstretch.com first of all welcome back glad to see you um, following up a little on what Steven said you own sprint car teams you own tracks and specifically Eldora it was almost a, a therapy for you to get to go up and ride around on a four-wheeler and kind of get the, the shoes dirty, the hands dirty. Has this incident taken away from the, the cleansing properties of that therapy, and do you think you'll ever be able to, to ride around Eldora in the four-wheeler and feel the same again? Well, I'm sure I will. It's just not right now. It's, you know, that's an important aspect of my life. It's... Uh, something that's very important to me but right now it's right at this moment today it's there's other things that are important to me right now but and they still are but it, I'm I'm not ready to go do that yet uh, you know going and running the cup car right now is important to me and uh, you know the, the great thing about Eldora and the dirt track teams and our drivers is we've got great people in place that do great things there and that's given me afforded me the time to be able to, to think about what I need to do right now. Jennifer. Jennifer, Associated Press, you talked briefly about your race yesterday. It's been the best race you've had in your five back. Is there any correlation, do you think, personally, in how you performed yesterday to being able to move forward in the decision Wednesday? I, I really don't know if it does or not, to be honest. Um, Honestly, at the racetrack on Friday and Saturday, we struggled. Uh, and, you know, our qualifying effort uh, was the best that I'd qualified at, at Dover in a long time. But I, we really struggled in practice leading up to that. And Saturday all day, we struggled. And I thought Chad and the engineers did a really good job Saturday night of taking all the information that they learned on both days. And, and I, I could tell right off the bat on Sunday uh, that, that the car was quite a bit different than it had been uh, the rest of the weekend. It, it, I don't think it had anything to do with that, honestly. I, I think getting back in the car every time I've got in there, it's given me a chance to, to focus again, and that's, that's something that I've needed to, as a diversion. Um, but I think from the time that I went back at Atlanta, the first session there, the car felt really good, and, and we had a good weekend at Atlanta up to till it got derailed. But, um, you know, I... I think at this point in my career as a driver, I think when you when you make the decision to put that helmet on, you you have to know in your in your heart that you're ready to go and you're ready to do it. And, and I felt comfortable in the car from day one. Biff Bernstein, New York Times, you're a championship level driver on the track and a, a sort of a larger than life figure off of it, which is responsible for all of this. Can you get back to that person that you were, that garrulous? Um, likable, combative guy, or, or is it going to be a while before you're that personality that fans have been drawn to all these years? Well, I think, I think the support we've had from our fans, I don't, I don't know if they even care if we get back to that. They're just happy we're back right now, and that's, that's, been, a, that's been very comforting uh, for us and for me. Um, I've really appreciated their support and, and how they've help welcome me back to the track so um, it, it's hard to say Bib, to be honest uh, I appreciate the fact that you said I was a nice guy but um, 
you know, this is this is a process that's day to day. It's you take it one day at a time, and you know, before the accident happened, I mean, a day would fly by, and now a day seems like two, three days. It, the the clock seems to it feels like the batteries are running low on the clock, but um, you know, I, I I honestly think that every day it'll get it'll get better, it'll get easier, and. And I think it will for Kevin's family as well. I mean, I, th I think time heals, and, and like I said, I don't know if it'll ever be normal again, but it, we'll, find, we'll find a place to settle into, and, and we'll do the best we can like we have to this point. So uh, whether I ever get back to that or not, I mean, hopefully through this we'll somehow be a better person. So, uh, you know, that's all I can hope for. We'll go to Alan, then we'll go back to the back row with TV. Uh, Alan Kavan and NASCAR.com. Tony, until last Wednesday, there, there was the very real possibility of facing charges, which seems very scary. Um, in your grief or in getting over what happened in the accident, were you able to separate that part? Were you fearful of charges? And how did you deal with that aspect of it? I think you said it best yourself right there. I mean, any time that you're facing something like that and, and your fate is in someone else's hands, it's it's natural to be fearful, but all along I I knew and I know what the facts are. I knew what had happened and I know what happened, and I think through the process of the sheriff's department, and the district attorney, and going to a 23-person grand jury, um, it, all the facts were presented and and their decision spoke, and and it was what I knew. So, um, you know, I, I can't say that I would be lying if I said there wasn't a piece of relief, but that was very short-lived in my heart because as quickly as it was relief in my, in my heart, it was at the same time it went right back to the fact of, that, we lost, that we lost Kevin. And, uh, you know, we lost a, a young driver that had a lot of talent. Marty Smith, ESPN, you discussed those early days not wanting to do anything, just be secluded. What thought, if any, throughout this process have you given to hanging it up all together and just being done driving? You know, it's, and even with the decision right now that I don't know if and when I'll ever get back in a sprint car, I've, like I said, the support from the fans and the support from uh, your peers and, and people that, we're around every day. I mean, I've had drivers that I race with every week and, and drivers that I haven't raced with for months that have said, don't let this keep you from doing what you love. And, you know, this is what I've done all my life. This is what I've done for 36 years. And I wouldn't change anything about it. I, I love what I do. I love driving race cars. But, you know, I think, I think it might change uh, right now as far as how much of it and what I do. But I, there was never a thought in my head about stopping. I mean, I, that, would, that would take the life out of me. Marty Snyder, NBC Sports, uh, kind of along the lines of what Marty just said. One, how often do you think about the events of what happened? How often do you replay it in your mind? And for a guy who loves this sport so much, did your passion at all wane at any moment for this sport? I don't think your passion ever goes away. I just... You know, probably more than anything over the last seven weeks, I've just been disengaged from it, you know, more than anything. Um, there's your first part again. I'm sorry, Marty. I, I think about it every day. I, I, and I wish I could say it was once a day, but it's not. It, I think about it a lot every day. Um, you know, and that's, but that's the great thing about getting back in the race car is it gives me time to, to forget about it for a minute and to, to stop thinking about it. And then, you know, after you get done at the end of the day, you start thinking about it again. It's, it's, not, it's not something that goes away, you know, it, it, and it, it'll never go away. It's, it's always gonna be a part of my life the rest of my life. Um, and, you know, that's the unfortunate part. It's, it's gonna be a part of my life. It's gonna be a part of Kevin's family's life. It's, it's never gonna go away for any of us, but hopefully it'll get easier for, for all of us. I'll go with Jeff and then Bob. Tony, you mentioned uh, replaying what happened in your mind. Um, have you watched the, the video of what happened? I've seen, I've seen the video of it, yes. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Bob Pocker, Sporting News. You, you said you were disappointed by some of the reaction, but are you hurt by what has been said about you and your role in this tragedy? And since it's a sponsor-driven sport, is there, do you feel you need to do or can do anything to kind of repair your reputation? Ask me the first part again. I'm, these two-part things, I got a short mind, so. Uh, you said you were disappointed by some of the reactions. Yeah. Initially, yes. Initially, I was hurt by some of the things I read. And, but then I looked at who they were from, and it's people that have never met me, have never spent time with me, don't know me. Um, and again, they're, they're making a judgment off of either what, they, what was presented and what the facts were that they had, or they were people that didn't like me to begin with and didn't matter what the facts were. So <laughs> I really stopped wasting my time worrying about it. You know, I, like I said, I know what happened. I know what the facts are. And that, you know, that's all that matters. Kyle McCurry, My Fox Carolinas. Um, a lot of these press conferences that have happened throughout the past few weeks, a lot of your fellow drivers asked about this situation. Some of them saying they've attempted to reach out to you and text you, and some saying they hadn't heard back and that kind of thing. Just wonder, has there been certain ones that you've leaned on, talked to, that have helped you get through this? There have, um, and you know there. It's been done behind closed doors, and that's the way I want to keep it on, for their behalf and my behalf. But yes, there's there's been a lot of support, and and especially when the accident happened. Like I said, I didn't I didn't want to do anything, and so there's there's a lot of text messages. There's a lot of people that have reached out that I'm now starting the process of get, getting in touch with them and thanking them for their support and and explaining to them why I didn't get back to them. That's probably been the hardest part. One of the hardest parts of this for me has been not having that contact with my friends and my peers and uh, you know going to the racetrack was the first step in reconnecting with a lot of those people and uh, you know being able to thank them for for their kind words their uh, their advice there there's been so much that I've learned from my peers and my friends through this uh, whether it's been through personal experiences of theirs or just kind words that they've said and and thoughts and advice that they've given us that have really meant a lot. And that's something that the rest of my life, I don't think I could spend the rest of my life and, and accurately thank everybody for, for what they've done to, to help us get through this. Both. It's, it's been all across the racing community, um, in NASCAR, outside NASCAR, people that... Uh, I've met along the way that aren't involved in racing at all, but are people that understand. So uh, that's that's been a huge, huge part for me. All right, I think we're getting a little close to wrap it up, but we got Marty and then Dustin, I believe, in the back. Marty Smith, ESPN. I imagine a substantial moment of vulnerability for you must have been that walk to driver introductions at Atlanta. First time you've been in public, you don't know what people are thinking. What was it like to walk up there and hear what you heard from the grandstands? Honestly, at first, I thought I accidentally walked out in Dale Jr.'s spot. Um, but it was very overwhelming. It, it, um, I'm glad I had sunglasses on. Um, it, but it, it was probably the most flattering uh, and humbling parts of my career was to, to walk out there and have that kind of reception and uh, you know, riding around in the back of the pickup truck there and seeing people against the fence that were cheering for us and they had Jeff Gordon shirts on and Carl Edwards shirts and um, Matt Kenseth shirts. It didn't matter what they had on. It, it, it really shows the support and, you know, hearing about at Bristol how, uh, you know, something that I was really happy with was the fact that on the 13th lap, people held up 13 for Kevin and on the 14th lap held, held it up for us. And I think it shows the, the, the kind of bond that the race fans and, and the racing community have with each other. But it was, it was very flattering in Atlanta, for sure. I, I just, I'll never forget that moment. Dustin Long, MRN.com. You had talked about in the article with the Associated Press last week about uh, seeking professional help. Uh, has that continued 
And how has that process, what has that done for you and, and what kind of a foundation in, in, in moving forward? Well, I think it's, you know, our whole life, I don't think any of us ever read anything in book at school or learned anything about how to deal with a tragedy like this. And to have somebody there that, that could help us through that and, and help us be able to make forward progress it was very important. And it's still, we're, we're still using them. Um, it, it's, it's not something that gets back to normal overnight. And it's something we'll deal with for a long time. But it's, it's nice to have that kind of support and that, that kind of uh, guidance that, that will help you learn how to cope with it and deal with it and, and, and start moving on. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for your time today. Certainly appreciate it. Tony, thank you. And that'll conclude it. A transcript of this will be available at nascarmedia.com as soon as it's available. Thank you again, for everyone, for your thank time. Thank you for coming today, guys.